This is a very pivotal moment for the channel. This is the whole reason I got the CNC machine. It all comes down to this. I am going to begin machining my billet irons. I am modifying the parts that came from New Zealand as they were intended to run. It's finally time to say, okay, I think there's something more to them and I'm gonna make that change. I have to do it on the production pieces. I can't run a test piece. I am building like a pyramid to hold that iron up. That way the machine can come down and work its magic. These are the billet irons right here. And you can see even they had some interesting machine work done to them while they were building them. Somebody out in Australia slash New Zealand machined these. We're gonna take them up a notch. These do not have primary injectors and it is absolutely dreadful for the way that they also set up the intake manifold. This engine, under 3000 RPM, does not get enough airflow with the injectors all the way up here. It ends up dribbling down and then finally ending up in the motor way too late. There's no timing you can do, there's no nothing you can do. It's a combination of them being too far away and the way injectors have to collect on the walls when they can't flow with enough air. So, we have machined this as a test. We will graft primary injector rails, almost back to stock, these are stock ones from full function, into this area right here. And we have to make sure they don't hit the intake manifold because it, you know, it does this like boomerang, almost 270 degree whiplash back. So it has to be in the right position here. We also can't go so far in that we get close to this coolant seal ring here. You tap into that game over as well. Looking at this side by side, if this was this surface here, this is our current optimal solution. We're gonna add some material back here. The idea is that the injectors will then plop in and then go down low enough so that way the rail sits flush with this part right here. That's my current best solution. I've sat on that for way longer than two months. It's just intense, like this is the money maker. This is the engine, this is the thing. If I trash this, game over, man. <laughs> so I need to make sure with absolute certainty that this thing's gonna work. One of the biggest problems is that when you stick something in a CNC machine this tall, it wobbles. We're gonna do that pyramid where we try and brace it all the way up to here and then start our adventures down. So thankfully my brother Kev is here. My other guardian angel, Isaiah is the other one. These two will watch over me as I go and do something really, really stupid. This is the moment where this goes into the machine, but I just wanna make sure we get a really good vibe check in the room. So. Yeah. Yeah, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. You feeling it? I'm feeling it, Mr. Krabs. Okay, there's no going back. So this plate on the back, is the same one we do all the porting and the exhaust porting with, but I also designed it to do vertical work on this. So it's got three major purposes already. Let's see how accurate it is on this side too. There we are. Those are brutally accurate. Right now, if we were to take this and even with this as it is, held up like that, and us machining into this area, it's still asking for problems. Let's brace it again on each side. What better than a jig that already exists? We'll bolt that one to that side. And now this is sandwiched between these two. And we'll get some long bolts that go straight through all this, dowel the rest of it. But to get really crazy, considering this is such an important part of the engine, we'll basically build like a weird mini stack, have the dowels go straight through here, and then machine this, and you can't really mess up from a vibration standpoint. So this is about as good as it gets. It is finally time to make the first cuts, and we're gonna use drilling to our advantage here that it doesn't wobble or have any real major issues straight down. So we're gonna drill the two major holes for each of the injectors that go straight through this. So you will be able to see it end up poking through the bottom of here. We'll show you that after the operation is done. You don't go back from this. We can't undo what we're about to do. So I'm gonna do a spot drill each of these and then drill straight into my very expensive custom irons. Let's see what happens with that. Okay, nice little baby. Ooh, I'm gonna have to be careful when they drill yeah. bit. Oh, okay, I'm gonna set my, oh my God. That, I, that operation is a short drill bit and you notice it sent it forward. It's gonna snap the drill bit on the next one on this. So I have to be very, very, very careful. This is why we're doing these steps one by one. This is drilling straight through the air passages into the primary port, so this step, we're, we're committed. Stopping it right there. It definitely went through. There's the drill bit all the way straight through that material. We have destroyed the all-wheel drive four rotors motor right now and it is time to finish the operation to put these injectors in. Buckle up, 
We're gonna put the GoPro on so you can see the other operations kind of hammer through. We're gonna clean this out and then see if we can fit some primary injectors in here. We are going to just go and do it. We have to go slow because this is a very tall piece and the tool is very tall. So there's a lot of vibration or harmonics and this is not my specialty. Time's on our side. We can take time to do this. It's about a 20 minute operation in total. I'm just gonna keep watching and as soon as I hear vibration, that on certain operations, that vibration means that the tool is cutting more or vibrating and chipping. Like you gotta watch out for that sort of stuff. I wanted to pause it kind of halfway through to show you how close we are getting to the other housing without compromising the Coolix seal passage. We're pretty close, but it, it's not gonna cut into that house. If it cuts into the housing, I, we need to stop. But in my code, it should. That was touch and go watching that. But there you are. You guys get the first look. This is what needs to fit inside of this. Well, that's good news. That O-ring is pretty damn tight, but there you are. We're gonna go ahead and super speed through all the other three. And if you're wondering, since January or whenever we took the motor down, what have I been waiting on to reassemble it? This, this is 100% what it is. We finally can master this motor 100%. If I have a failure with this motor, I can rebuild it from scratch essentially. And all the porting, all of the irons, everything, I can rebuild the motor. So that means to me, I can push this motor as hard as I want. This will be low five beats to port to. And we'll go ahead and mirror this on the other side and not do as much chatter. But, uh, oh, I'm being summoned. We're gonna go ahead and run the machine right now. Those are all of the operations done to both sides of the same iron. I made super small like speed adjustments to this side. And that is beautiful. A couple chips in there, but the finish is even prettier than before. Absolutely smooth edge. This is the ultimate test right here. Pop that whole setup in there. And there you have what it'll look like. This, of course, this one doesn't have the connector on there but it would be the same exact thing. We're gonna fabricate something a little different to hold this fuel rail down because fuel pressure does create quite a few pounds of force and we'll drill it in and tap it here and here because I don't trust doing it up here where this iron does not have any material for that. We have primary injectors that are pointing right almost directly into the engine. This is a beautiful moment for the four rotors. This is gonna gain so much more granular control over the engine, especially under 3000 RPM because of the way that every port is open. Not my favorite thing, but it is what it is. And we have much better control over this motor. My feeder rates and everything work really well. Before everybody gets in here and it gets to mass chaos and all the projects and people are here, I wanted to show you guys what I've been working on with the four rotor. I have taken apart the entire intake manifold to make sure that these injectors fit. I am screwed up, down, left, right, sideways, backwards, <laughs> all of the different ways. Thankfully, because of computers, I was able to fit injectors in the very smallest spot with almost no room for error. Check this out. So you can see this is the intake manifold for the all-wheel drive four rotor. It's missing the big tank because that is just too hot to handle, too cold to hold. <laughs> And I want to show you this. There's the injectors that I've now inserted into the primary rail. They're not cut all the way down. You can see right there, but they hit 
this runner as I was expecting. All the measurements led up to actually doing something really, really impressive. This one, not so much. This one's not as bad. You can see that they're not fully touching the manifold, but at least when I go to cut that down, it'll fit quite nicely. So the further one is going to take a little bit more work. So that's what I wanted when I had these welded on by Isaiah, is that I can cut them down a little bit, countersink the bolts, whatever the case is. I just want to make sure that these two injectors don't pull up and cause any sort of fires or fuel problems. This is a wonderful setup, and I think it'll work quite well tucked away. Something else I kind of noticed with all these injectors here is that I put hats on every single one of them to make them the correct height for this. Well, I don't need this anymore. I can shrink this all down and at least make this whole setup a little bit more compact. I am going to take these two, and these two are actually going to go down to the primary rail down here. So these will just be blanks or maybe room for more injectors. I don't have the wiring for it, but we could have all 16 up here and four down here if the ECU allows it. I went ahead and did one of these off camera because I didn't want to mess it up on camera. The first one turned out beautiful, absolutely perfect. Let's take a look over here. I machined two holes 1.1 inches apart. Talk about the limitations of this. I made sure that this had enough meat to avoid this bolt hole here, which cool, it's a bolt hole. They could kind of overlap, but coolant is all in this channel and there's nothing sealing it from this one. So you'd have coolant coming out of this hole if it was too far back, too far forward, and then it breaks through to the injector. This one, same thing, is that if you go too far forward, it now will hit into this one right here and we've got collisions and we need to shorten bolts. Thankfully, this bolt already goes deep enough, so when this does collide with it, I can sink them perfectly. If you go too far with this one, you are now into the suck zone, <laughs> the, the uh, intake runners. This is such a very tight tolerance situation. Everything ends up working out perfectly. This is our test version, but they're overbuilt, so we can run them. Let me show you how I did this. The manual mill, oddly enough, ended up being the better choice. It is almost barely not the choice. If you look at this, this is the table all the way down, and the drill bit is just long enough. If you're ever gonna tap M8 bolts, you actually use a 6.8 millimeter drill bit. That's not the thickness of the outer of the thread, that's eight. <laughs> this is 6.8, so you get the right amount of meat left. But to tap the M8, I went and spent an extra couple bucks and got this. This is probably the best combination of tapping ability for this situation. This is one that you're probably more used to, this is a traditional tap, square. All the extra metal from each of the threads kind of curly cues inside of here. So you have to do like a quarter turn back, quarter turn more back, quarter turn and so on. Also, it doesn't start making the full thread until about five to eight rows in. This one on the other hand is meant for more of a bottom tapping situation. So third thread in and you already have a full thread. Now that works really well for aluminum. I don't know if that's the ideal for everything, but the reason for this is you want to go down to the bottom of a hole and use as much of the hole as possible. So instead of this, you'd have to drill a hole this much longer to then have threads from there. So a lot of major advantages to this style and you pay dearly for it. These are too expensive to risk any of that. We're gonna go ahead and use our same little setup that we did in the CNC mill. These are little all thread bolts right there. So this is how insanely close this is. Drill a bit right as far as I can. Whenever the teeth almost start to go up into it. <laughs> Look at that, that is the maximum height of everything. The head, the table, everything. That is all the way back. There is hole number one. And again, we're trying to hit that 1.1 inch. So we actually will go back to the old school method. So 115, one, two, so there is 1.1 inches, exactly. Those holes both went almost an inch exactly. General rule of thumb is that if you have an eight millimeter bolt like this, the most you really need to worry about is double the thickness of the bolt in depth. So if it's eight millimeters wide, 16 millimeters deep is the most you need to go to get the proper amount of fastening. Obviously unique situations, I'm sure, but generally speaking, twice the width is the depth of your cut. So we wanna make sure that this tap can go at least 16 millimeters, which is just over half an inch. All those threads came right out the top. And you can already see those threads are looking beautiful. 
And that is a pretty damn good looking thread. Let's make sure it works. Look at that, even just two rotations in, you see how much it's holding that bolt? That is very solid tapping. That's how much thread we've got to hold that fuel rail in on that one. And the same on that one as well. This is the beginning of a really custom fuel rail. We'll end up probably machining this all once we know exactly what we need, but this is certainly gonna hold these in place without us being able to see them. There's two bolt holes, we're gonna drill one and then the other countersink the front one because that manifold is right there so we can't stack a bolt on top of this. We'll mill into this and then use a Allen head, which is my least favorite type of socket, but we'll use an Allen head bolt to fasten that side in. Ever since I discovered this tool, all of my drill holes and everything just come out so much cleaner. It has almost exactly the amount of thread we want. And let's hope both holes blindly thread in. They do. That is a solid fit. The threading fits perfectly. We have some cleanup work to do up here. They fit in perfectly, right? And when you put this on, again, these injectors are gonna get serviced. The problem is, as I measured it all to have it go flush, but just minor details and the way the O-rings fit and everything, it does not fit flush. So I need to put an extra little bit of material back so that way this one sits flat like that. So I need to make sure it's happy like this. And that threaded right in. We could run it like this, but the problem is somebody in a rush would over tighten this and it would crush the injector bodies. With some red Loctite, these aren't going anywhere. Now they're not gonna go anywhere. They're definitely not going anywhere. We are on the tail end of this. They're ugly as hell, but they work until I poked through on this one. I poked into the fuel rail itself, so that's absolutely not good. It shows you a little bit of how close that is. I'm gonna have to make my own. This was excellent for making sure that we get the right heights, lengths, make sure it clears the intake manifold. We'll probably do a real nice, heavy sort of uh, chamfer on here. This one actually goes in perfectly. It's squared. It's countersunk all the way down to the correct height. It's using a end mill instead of a drill bit, so it's got a flat bottom. What we'll do is we'll just measure, model this, make the small adjustments that need to be made on this, and cut my own. The point of these is to not think about the fuel system at all. And what we'll end up doing is we'll actually have these you know, so far apart, and we'll weld a tube together so it'll be one fuel rail, firm, <laughs> thick, and you just don't have to think about it. This end, you can visually inspect. This end, you can visually inspect, and you don't have to worry about fuel popping out. I couldn't help it. I had to do it. I had to finish the fuel rail. I've got a chunk of aluminum scrap in the shop that is perfect for this. I'll show you the design in a second, but we're going ahead and just going to do the first rough cut. I'm just going to speed through it. Let's, let's hope it doesn't destroy the machine or the metal. This is the fastest operation I've ever done on this machine, so I'm actually going to slow it down a little bit. This could be bad. I got a new tool, so I'm testing it. Oh, hell yeah. Let's see what happens. This is the machine at full speed. It's like halfway through already. Yeah, it should take five minutes to rough the whole uh, piece out right now. Five minutes? Yeah. So this is actually non-destructive, so it's like the fast, proper way of doing it. Huh. This is like your roughing phase in. That was seven minutes. And we have a roughed out piece. That's a new tool. I'm super excited. I feel responsible enough to own it. And that's what you get for seven minutes at full tilt. We're going to go ahead and do a finishing pass, or at least more drilling or whatever. We're just going to go through this really quick. This is almost starting to look like a professional job. I'm very, very thankful and proud of what's going on right now. But we are doing something really sketchy, and that's one of my favorite things here. Safe, but sketchy. I actually crashed the machine for the first time last night. I did not catch it on camera because it was five in the morning. I did a machine operation where it tested the height, except it tests the height to test the sides, but it doesn't record the height. So when I went to do what I'm about to do now, wham, went straight down. I was ho hovering over the stop, and thankfully all it did was a little bit of uh, friction welding <laughs> right there. I lost a carbide tool in the mix and I actually destroyed two drill bits getting it out because I had to go through the other way and push the carbide out of the thing but I was able to save my very first test. So what we are doing right now, deep plunging. And for me deep is about three and a half inches. We're gonna start a little baby, little deep right into there and then we're gonna follow that up with 100% of what we can give through here. That'll go almost all the way through. 
we'll clean up all of this on the inside and then we're actually going to make threads for 6 a.m. We don't have a tap for 6 a.m. Which, by the way, is 916-18. We'll make them out of scratch. So watch this process and then we'll just test it with this little guy right here that's a 6 a.m. ORB on this side and this is an 8 a.m. ORB on this side. Normally, you don't have them do this. I don't know why I have this piece, but it's perfect for testing. Crash right into it. Starter hole. Just to destroy the other one. Just clean this up. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> Catches not the last second, but like the last half turn, no, almost almost full turn. It's getting pressed, but not crushed. That's a big difference. The low ring is now holding the seal between the liquid seal between these two, but the those threads are holding the structural seal. But there you go. All that done in one run, and we have some of the most perfect looking threads I've ever seen. What have you wasted all this time hanging out with me for this video for? This is the payoff. This beautiful chunk of aluminum that was also a scrap from my suspension is now something extremely functional and a huge shout out to Full Function Engineering for basically copying their design. It's not for sale or anything like that, it's just custom because I needed to mount it like that. The O-rings are in perfect tolerance, holding ceiling, the bolt holes just go in like that's nice and tight hold there and without much effort we're in on that one obviously it'd be nicer hardware but a little lock tight and these injectors are just not going to go anywhere this is the wave of the future for me you can't see this so you can't visually inspect it this bolt is purposely a countersunk so that way that intake manifold coming up just barely grazes this even though it's bulkier it is the lowest profile setup i can do so I'm very, very happy, very thankful for everybody involved. We're ready to reassemble a four-rotor. That, this is what I've been holding off on, is being able to recreate these, make them even better. So there's a couple more mods we'll be doing, but not to these. We'll be doing to my own billet irons, kind of more modular, cool stuff like this. But there we go, guys. That is the four-rotor. That's what nine months of waiting has been, is I finally have the confidence to do this. There's nothing wrong. It's 100% ready to go and honestly safe. I thought I was done there, but when I went to test fit right here, this edge was a chunky monkey and I had to take it down. So I took this side down, counter sunk the bolt a little bit more and look at what you get. People aren't gonna hit them and rest the manifold on them. It's just got some nice clearance. It's really trick. Ultra uber That's trick. Nice. That way it's got tolerance where it needs tolerance. We're gonna go ahead and get the right bolts for this, but this is- You know what could have fixed this though? Was another intake manifold. Uh, I don't know about that. That, that would have fixed it at all. I, yeah, but I also like the, the challenge. We were able to get oh, between, an intake manifold? Get, yeah. Get between here, 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 injector heights, the runner height. That's a hell of a lot of constraints to work around. A new intake manifold would be pretty, pretty sticky pretty in there. I wonder, I wonder that's why. Nice. Uh, that's my premix. I premixed it's it. It's sticky. Here. You see that? Yeah. <laughs> that's my two ball ointment. <laughs> two ball ointment. <laughs>